Hello Spell, welcome back to my channel. Today is gonna to be my March TBR. This is separate from my middle grade March TBR. This is the books I plan to read besides that. So if you wanna see my middle grade March TBR, you can go to that video. So to get started, I'm gonna start with the next book I'm gonna pick up that was sent to me for review. Uh, I'm probably gonna get through several in the month, but since they've all been in book hauls recently, I don't wanna talk about all of them again. So I'll just talk about the next one I plan to pick up when I finish my current ones. The Ogress and the Orphans by Kelly Barnhill. I think this comes out March 8th. I've read the synopsis so I won't read it again, but I'm very excited to read this. And I think I'll like this a lot more than The Girl Who Drank the Moon. And then next I'll talk about books that are next in a series that I want to read. And that part of my read get me caught up on the series. And so of course I won't read synopsis. Explorers at Pirate Island by Alex Bell. And this is the second book in the second trilogy of this, of uh, Explorers, Ocean Squid Explorers Club. The first was Polar Bears Explorers Club. And I absolutely love this whole world series, trilogies, all of them. And I love the first book of this trilogy. So I'm so excited to get to the second book. There's illustrations throughout. Can't wait. And then the third book in the Eerie on the Sea Mystery series, Shattergast by Thomas Taylor. Absolutely another favorite series that I love and I cannot wait to get back into this world and writing. Love these characters. And then I read the first book of the Starfell series forever ago and I got a big old book hug. So I have the second and third book. So I want to read the second book and get caught up and the fourth book is coming out and I'll have that soon in the UK. The UK edition will be coming out. So, the second book is Starfell, Willow Moss, and the Forgotten Tale by Dominique Valente. This is a U.S. edition. Absolutely stunning. And the U.K. edition of it. The U.K. edition has illustrations throughout. And it also has... Now, I'll probably read the U.K. edition since there's illustrations throughout. But after reading the first book, I knew it was going to be a favorite series. So, when it's a favorite, I like to collect if the editions are all are different and both beautiful so very happy about that and then i want to read the third and i think final book in the songs of magic series by s.a patrick a thunder of monsters this is one of my all-time top top favorite series so sad it's going to be over if this is the last one but phenomenal characters writing story everything about this cannot wait and i finished the first pages and co and i'm probably about halfway through the second one now so I should, i'm pretty confident i'll be done with that before march so I want to go to the third book in the Pages and Co. series. This is Tilly and the Map of Stories by Anna James. And then go to the fourth book after that. And underneath the dust jack jackets of the UK editions, they're beautiful. And I'm loving this series so far. I can see why I've never seen anybody not like it because it's just amazing. Such a, I love this world. I love this story. So very excited to continue that. And then for the next series I want to start after I finish Pages and Co. Yeah, Keeper of the Lost Cities by Sharon Ma Messenger. And this, I just grabbed the, this is the first book, Keeper of the Lost Cities. This is the illustrated and annotated edition. Another series I've never heard about, or not ever heard a bad thing about. I'm very excited. I know this is, it just sounds right up my alley and like it'll be a favorite. And I'm glad it's a long series because favorites I just like to continue. 12 year old Sophie Foster has a secret. She is a telepath and has a unique ability to hear the thoughts of everyone around her. Something that she never, she's never known how to explain and has made her an outcast, even in her own family. But everything changes the day she meets Fitz, a mysterious boy who appears out of nowhere and also reads minds. She discovers there's somewhere she does belong and staying where she is will put her in grave danger. In the blink of an eye, Sophie is forced to leave behind everything and start a new life in a place that is vastly different from her home. Sophie has new rules and skills to learn, and not everyone is thrilled with her homecoming. There are secrets buried deep in Sophie's memory, secrets that other people desperately want, but even kill for. So exciting. And then a book I ordered the day it came out, and I posted it and hauled it and everything. And then several, like a month, a couple months later, or however long it's been, it was everywhere on Instagram, and which is weird after it's been so long after a release. And like I clicked on the post, and apparently I think it said it was a new Newberry winner. I think is what was why. So that has me very intrigued, and I've even more even more so than I already was, because the story just sounds phenomenal, and the cover is absolutely beautiful. And so it's bumped it up to 
to make me want to read it sooner. The Last Quintesta by Donna Barba Aguera. Habia Una Vez. A girl named Petra Penne, who wanted nothing more than to be a storyteller, like her Abueleta. But Pe Petra's world is ending. Earth has been destroyed by a comet, and only a few hundred scientists and their children, among them Petra and her family, have been chosen to journey to a new planet. They are the ones who must carry the human race. Hundreds of years later, Petra wakes to this new planet and the discovery that she is the only person who remembers Earth. A sinister collective has taken over the ship during its journey, bent on erasing the sins of humanity's past. They have systematically purged the memories of all aboard, or purged them all together. Petra alone now carries the stories of our past, and with them, any hope for our future. Can she make them live again? Cannot wait. And then, J.D. in Five Dimensions by Diane K. Salerni. I read another book of hers. It's a long title. Eleanor Alice Roosevelt's Ghost. I was obsessed with it and cannot wait to read more from her. What do you do when it turns out your whole life has been a lie? J.D. Martin has always been told she was abandoned by her parents. Creatures from the fourth dimension rescued her and placed her with a loving adoptive family. Now J.D. acts as an agent for the beings, also known as Seared. She uses the fourth dimension as a shortcut to travel anywhere on Earth, performing missions calculated to guide the world toward a brighter future. But then J.D. discovers that her origin story is fake. In reality, her birth family has suffered multiple tragedies and disasters engineered from four space, including the devastating loss of her their baby girl, her. Doubting the Sears, J.D. starts anonymously observing her long-lost family. Why are they so important? What are the true intentions of the Sears? And what will all powerful four-dimensional beings do to a rebellious human girl when they realize she's interfering with their plans? So excited. And then to continue on my Sarah Beth Durst reading journey, Spark. She has become a favorite author. When shy Mina bonds with a lightning beast, a creature of fire and chaos, everyone thinks is a mistake. Everyone but Mina and Pixit, the beast himself, who know they're destined to help other storm beasts and guardians create perfect weather. But as Mina struggles to succeed at lightning school, she discovers ideal weather comes at a deadly cost. She's always been quiet, but now lives are at stake, and with Pixie's help, Pixit's help, Mina must find a way to be heard. Very excited. Cannot wait to read another book by her. And then The Missing Barbagazi by H.S. Norp. I love The Hungry Ghost by this author. So I'm very excited to read another book by her, and it looks very perfect for winter. Tessa has heard her grandfather's stories about the fabled Barbagazi since she was little. Now, after his death, she's determined to see the gnome-like creatures for herself and prove her grandfather wasn't just a confused old man. When Tessa discovers Gawion, a young male Barbagazi, she's overjoyed. She can finally show everyone that her grandfather was telling the truth. But Gawion needs her help. His sister is missing and may have been captured by humans. As the two form a friendship, Tessa realizes that uncovering the truth about the Barbagazi carries great responsibilities. And sometimes things have to remain a secret. So, I don't want to be sad. So, probably look for the name of the Barbagazi at the end make sure he's okay. The Doll's Eye by Marina Cohen. I have loved the book I read by her so I immediately bought the others and she has another book coming out that I cannot wait to read. All Haley wants is for everything to go back to the way it used to be. Back when she didn't have to share her mother with her stepfather and stepbrother. Back when she wasn't forced to live in a musty decomposing house. Back when she had a life in the city with her friends. With Haley Wiles away what's left of her summer, exploring the nearby woods and splitting her time between her strange, bug-obsessed neighbor, Gabe, and the nice old lady who lives above the garage, she begins to notice the house isn't just dark and creepy. It's full of secrets, like the appearance of a mysterious dollhouse and its family of perfect dolls. Oh, how Haley wishes her family were more like those lovely dolls. Then one day, she discovers a lone glass eye rolling around on the floor of the attic. As she holds it close one night, her whole world changes forever. Sounds creepy and amazing. In the Forest of Moon and Sword by Amy Raphael. I have her newest book, so I want to read her. I think this is her first book before I read that. I'm so excited about this and it's illustrated throughout. Art loves only three things in life, her mother, her horse, and her sword. So when her mother is taken one cloudless night, accused of witchcraft, Art mounts her horse and chases after her. As she journeys through the wild forests of Scotland and England, she will use her mother's herbal recipe book and natural magic to guide her. But will she spot the signs from the omens? Can she reach her mother in time? Sounds incredible. Very excited. The Language of Ghosts by Heather Fawcett. Absolutely love The School Between Winter and Fairyland. And so I want to read more of her books. I have another book in here about her too. Forced into exile on an enchanted moving island, ex-princess Noah Marchena has two missions. Reclaim her family's stolen throne and ensure that the dark powers her older brother, Julian, possesses don't go to his head in the process. But between babysitting her annoying little sister, Mite, and keeping an eye on the cake-loving sea monster that guards the, movie, guards the moving island, Noah has her hands full. When the siblings learn that their enemies are searching for a weapon capable of defeating Julian, whose legendary spell weaving is feared throughout the kingdom, once and for all, they vow to get to it first. 
To everyone's surprise, the key to victory turns out to be a long lost magical language and only Noah can speak it. But what if by helping her brother, Noah ends up losing him? I had this forever in the other book in the TV, the possibility pile. So really want to get to them. And then the rest are more like atmospheric winter reads that are, I want to get to as many as possible before spring gets here. The Dyerville Tales by M. P. Kozlowski. It just looks wintry on the cover and it's illustrated throughout. Vince Elgin is an orphan, having lost his mother and his father in a fire when he was young. But beyond that, his life hasn't been much of a fairy tale. With only a senile grandfather who barely knows to call family, Vince was interned in a group home where he spun fantastical stories and dreamed that his father, whose body was never found, might one day return for him. But it's been a long time since the fire, a long time since Vince told himself a story worth believing in. That's when a letter arrives, telling Vince that his grandfather has passed away. Vince cannot explain it, but he's convinced that if his father is somehow still alive, he'll find him at the funeral. He strikes out for the small town of Dyerville, carrying only one thing with him, his grandfather's journal. The journal tale is a tale that could not possibly be true. The story of his grandfather's young life with witches, giants, magical books, and evil spirits. But as Vince reads on and gets closer to Dyerville, fact and fiction begin to intertwine, and Vince finds that his very real adventure may have more in common with his grandfather than he ever could have known. That sounds amazing. So intrigued by the synopsis. Can't wait. The Great Hibernation by Tara Dearman. The most important tradition in tiny St. Colonius by the Fjord, the Fjord is the annual tasting of the sacred bear liver. Each citizen over 12 must eat one bite of liver to prevent the recurrence of the great hibernation when the town founders fell asleep for months. This year is Jean Huddy's first time to taste the liver. It doesn't go well. A few hours later, all the adults fall asleep and no one can wake them. The kids are left to run things and they're having a blast. That is, until the town bullies take over the mayor's office and the police force. Jean suspects that this hibernation was actually engineered by someone in town. She starts to investigate and inspires other kids to join her in a secret plan to save St. Polonius. Courage, teamwork, and scientific smarts unlock a quirky mystery in this delightful and funny story. Oh, I can't wait. That just sounds so good. And then the other book by Heather Foster's The Faucet that I mentioned, Ember and the Ice Dragons. Ember St. George is a dragon. At least she was before her adoptive father, a powerful but accident-prone magician, turned her into a human girl to save her life. Unfortunately, Ember's growing tendency to burst into flames at certain temperatures, not to mention her invisible wings, is making it too dangerous for her to stay in London. The solution? Ship Ember off to her aunt's research station in Frigid, Antarctica. Though eccentric Aunt Myra takes getting used to, Ember quickly feels at home in this land of ice storms, mischievous penguins, and 24-hour nights. She even finds herself making friends with a girl genius called Nisha and a mysterious orphan named Moss. Then she discovers that Antarctica is home to the winter last hunt, a yearly tradition in which rare ice dragons are hunted for their jeweled scales. Furious, Ember decides to join the hunt to sabotage it from the inside. But being an undercover dragon isn't easy, especially among dragon hunters. Can a 12-year-old fire dragon survive the dangers that come her way in the Antarctic wilderness and protect ice, dragon ice dragons from ex extinction? I've been traumatized by a dragon death <laughs> in another book, so I will, of course, want to make sure there's nothing like sad. But it sounds amazing. And then Murder in Midwinter by Flora Hitchcock. So many books by this author and I'm so excited to finally read one. If books could kill, when Maya takes a photo from the top of a bus, she has no idea of the trouble it will bring. The bright shop window is gorgeous, but the couple arguing in front of it look like they want to kill each other. And when her flash goes off, they look as if they want to kill her too. Then a body turns up. The police suggest that Maya should go away for a while, somewhere remote, somewhere safe. Her aunt's farm in the Welsh mountains is a perfect place to hide, and soon it's snowing hard enough to cut them off completely. No one can get in and no one can get out. But does that mean there's nothing to fear? I'm so excited. That sounds incredible. The Adventures of Letty Peppercorn by Sam Gayton. Letty Peppercorn cannot go outside. Ma told her so right before Ma disappeared forever. So Letty's house is on stilts and she's stuck with only the wind and a pigeon for friends. Nothing exciting ever happens to her until one winter's night when a man with an icicle beard comes to the door. He claims to be an alchemist, the greatest that ever lived, and he is where... He is here to sell Letty his newest invention, an invention that will change her life and the world forever, an invention called snow. But snow is not the only secret the alchemist holds. He knows where Letty's ma is, and Letty is determined to get ma back even if it means risking her old life to follow the alchemist. Join Letty as she travels across the world to reunite her family in this charming and marvelously inventive novel from Sam Gayton, beautifully illustrated by Polly Bernatin. Sounds incredible. This is snow and the ice beard and just very intrigued. Can't wait. Vasilisa by Julie Matheson. I know the sequel, it's already just came out or it's about to come out in a week or so. I can't remember which. 
but a house with chicken wings is very excited. 1919, but in Eden Fall, Pennsylvania, the Great War is not over. Not for Vasilisa, at least. Papa is presumed dead on the fields of Flanders. Mama is being courted by an absolute ogre. And now Babka, her beloved grandma, has had a bad spell. Or has she fall or fallen under one? Only the old tales, the Russian fables Vasilisa was raised on, offer any comfort or counsel. But what if they are more than child's tales? Enter Ivan, who jumps a train for Edenfall at midnight and finds Vasilisa in a real fix. He's on his own quest, but old Russ is calling from across time and both worlds. And if they heed the call, they might both get what they want. It won't be easy. Three wishes, two children, one ogre. They're outnumbered and outclassed. Baba Yaga and old Kashi after, are after the same thing and each other, and the children are caught in the crosshairs. Vasilisa has a secret weapon in the humblest of guises, but will the meek truly inherit the earth or will the mighty prevail? One thing is certain, it's a fairy tale of their own making, a tale whose happy ending is ever in doubt. So excited, that sounds so good. I don't know, I've had forever. A duology, Anya and the Dragon by Sophia Pasternak. This is the first book. Second book is Anya and the Nightingale. Whoever destroys a single life has destroyed the entire world. Don't stand out. That's what Anya's babushka has always told her. Keep to yourself and don't cause trouble. But their family is about to lose their home, and Anya isn't about to stand around and do nothing. Her best option is working with her stars henchmen, who offer an easy bargain. Money in exchange for helping them capture a dragon, which Anya isn't even sure exists. With magic on their side, it seems like a pretty easy deal. But in this tale of mayhem and magic, other fantastical creatures abound as do tyrannical rulers, violent vikings, and Russian folk heroes make Anya question everything she thought she knew. As secrets are revealed and loyalties tested, she'll have to make the most difficult decision of her life, save her family or save her friends. Another one, I hope the dragons are okay and I'll try to make sure. <laughs> but very excited to finally read these. Another duology, Prisoner of Ice and Snow by Ruth Lauren. It's the first book. Second book is Seeker of the Crown. She'll do anything to break her sister out of prison, even get arrested on purpose. When 13-year-old Valor is sent to jail, she couldn't be happier. Demidova's prison for criminal children is exactly where she wants to be. Valor's twin sister, Sasha, is serving a life sentence for stealing from the royal family, and Valor is going to help her escape from the inside. Never mind that no one has escaped to the prison in centuries. Valor has a master plan and resources most people could only dream about. But she didn't count on having to outsmart both the guards and her fellow prisoners. If Valor's plan fails, she and Sasha could end up with fates worse than prison. Set against the backdrop of an icy queendom, this thrilling fantasy adventure is only the start to Valor's quest to protect those she loves at all costs. Sounds so good and atmospheric and like a great adventure. Kind of dark, probably. Very excited. All right, y'all, that's it for my March possibility reads, other than the middle grade March you were. You see any you're interested in? Have you read any of these? Did you like them? Did you not? Let me know in the comments. Hope you enjoyed the video and if you would like to subscribe i would love that if you would like to the shirt is the cheshire cat we're all mad here <laughs> and i will see you in my next video bye